Um, I'm starting with this reading number uh, five. Uh, as you can see at the top, it says study session two and reading five. Um, as we move forward, I will explain in detail what are these study sessions and, and why they are here. But right now, just focus on this. So, reading number five, uh, I will talk about. Um, now, if I ask you a question that if I can purchase something for 10 and I can sell it for uh, 12, should I do it? Yes. It's a good, good trade. I should do that. I should purchase something for 10, sell it for 12, and I'll make uh, 2 rupees, positive 2 rupees. But what if this 12 will be received after, um, uh, let's say, 3 years? So let's say this 12 will not be available now, rather, the customer will pay me uh, after 3 years. Now you can understand there is a role of interest. So basically, I'll be investing 10 rupees for three years. For three years, I'll be uh, paying interest on the loan. And so I cannot simply compare 10 and 12 because they are in different time zones. You can think of 10 as uh, uh, money now, and 12 is a money that will be due in three years. So they are not comparable. So what is the solution? The solution is we do a calculation, which is called prison value. So we'll calculate prison value of 12, let's say, it comes to 9, let's say it doesn't really come to 9, and we will compare these two and we'll say no, it's not a good trade, we are going to lose 1 rupee in this. Okay, the key thing is that we are comparing 10 with 9. 10 is the outflow that we have to pay to purchase the object, and 9 is the value of the money that we will receive later. Money will be received in 3 years, but the value of that money today is 9. How we get this 9? Very simple. We go to a bank and we say, look, uh, we are going to collect uh, some money in three years. We will give it to you after three years. How much you are willing to give us now? If we give you the right to receive that well in three years, how much are you willing to pay now? So bank will do the calculation and bank says, okay, oh, yeah, I'll give you nine rupees now as long as you pay me twelve rupees after three years. So that's the prison value. Prison value is simply another simply term. If you go to a bank and you say. Uh, this is the money that I will get in 3 years or 5 years, I will pay it to you. How much you are going to be willing to pay now? And that is prison value. Now, interestingly, in investment, that is the case mostly. You invest now, let's say you purchase a share now, you get dividend, not in the, after 1 year, 2 year, 3 year. Or you sell the share after 2 year, 3 year. So, particularly investment, or in fact, in business. Uh, you invest money now, you do not get it back uh, tomorrow. It takes time. So, uh, the solution to that is that we bring money back, though very intelligent person can be, why not move this 10 forward? We are doing this comparison at time zero, we are bringing back future monies. But how about moving this 10 forward? That can be done, that's perfectly fine. It's just as it's not a custom. Custom is to bring money back. You bring all monies back to time zero. Like this was a simple case, there was one payment at time three. Maybe there are multiple payments, like time 2, time 3, time 4, time 5. You bring all payments at time 0, you do the comparison and then you conclude. Now this will be called a negative NTV, net. Net is the term that we often use in finance, in investment. Net is something you deduct from something. So net is, uh, so for example, a salaried person will have a net salary, which is uh, the gross salary, less taxes, the net salary. So same is here. Net present value is negative. Uh, so we should not do this project. So, prison value is extensively used. Uh, bringing money back uh, at time zero is called discounting. As you can see, we are lowering it. 12, I mean, you bring it back, it is not going up, it's going down. So, discount, just like buy something at a discount, so same as the case here, we are discounting it, we are cutting it down to 9. On the other side, if we have decided to move 10 forward, then this would have been known as compounding, moving money forward. Um, in fact, uh, there is a formula that can be used for this purpose. In this, this uh, uh, summary, you have this formula mentioned here. Uh, there are many formula. In fact, this is one of the, of the many available. Uh, prison value is the future value divided by 1 plus i, the interest rate that bank is going to charge, uh, raised to the power number of years, n is number of years. You will hardly be using this formula. You won't have it because you have been provided with financial calculation. So all you're going to do is you're going to provide information to the calculator and the calculator will give you the answer. So it's as simple as that. And there, uh, this was a very simple case, but there can be more interesting cases. For example, um, what if you have, and by the way, this, this uh, is known as timeline. So this 
is time line. So T1, T2. Now HT represents end of a year. That's a very interesting point and very important. If you miss out this, your line is a mistake. Each point represents, so T1 is not year one. T1 is end of year one. Uh, similarly, P2, do not think of it as year two, no, it is end of year two. And the gap is the time, T. So, um, in exam, uh, uh, so T0 to T1, uh, this is first year, second year, and third year. This is timeline. Problems can be more interesting. For example, at time zero, we are uh, investing 100. We will collect uh, uh, 75 at T1. And we will collect uh, uh, at T2 another uh, 60. Now, to calculate NPV, net present value, you have to uh, uh, bring this to time zero as well as this to time zero. These two blue numbers will be the inflow, the present value of the inflows. And then you'll just calculate the difference and you'll get the answer. So that would be NPV. Uh, now, in this case, uh, things uh, could have been simpler if instead of 75 and 60, if instead of these two numbers, if you had both numbers 75, 75, if the, there is a series of similar payments, uh, which has another, for example, uh, yeah, uh, 75, 75, a minute, 75, 75, that series, then we have a different formula that we can use to calculate present value. Our life becomes much easier. Instead of calculating present value of each payment, we can just use one formula and get the present value of all those payments. This is known as annuity. Or annuity, the annuity or annuity is very common in finance because most people, for example, think of a fixed income investment. You invest money times zero, then you get the same amount year after year. So annuity is very important, uh, plays a very important role in, in finance, particularly investment. So the third uh, present value problem that we can have is, uh, let's say we are investing again, same, we are investing hundred at times zero. Uh, but our inflows are a series of inflows. Now, one thing that is important for this series, it can be three years or four years, five years, that's not important. But there should not be any gap. If in exam it says the series is that there is a payment at T1, payment at T2, no payment at T3, and then a uh, payment at T4. Now that's not annuity. You cannot miss out. So be careful about this because uh, these type of tricks can be there to put already in there. How difficult questions you can develop about present value, future value. It's a straightforward concept. They try to bring some complexity this way that a student is not careful and we say, oh yeah, annuity, let's use the annuity formula or the calculated annuity function. No. If there is a missing payment, then it is not annuity. It has to be continuous series of payments. Um, and then we can use calculator to calculate present value. So what you're going to do now is um, we are going to solve uh, this problem where we are going to calculate present value of these three payments. And uh, we're going to see how much it is worth. Should we do this project or not? So a project that requires investment of 100 now will result in inflow of 75, 75, and 75. Should we do this project? Now, we're going to calculate NPV and then we'll decide whether it is worth doing it or not. But a very common question in the exam is, can you answer this? Should we do this project without knowing the interest rate? Without knowing the present value. Only thing that you know is future. 100 is the investment that you need to make now, and you get 75 at year one, 75 at year two, and year three. Can you can you can answer uh, this? That should we uh, should we can we answer without discounting that this project should be a can be undertaken because good project. Present value will be equal to future value. Well, that is if interest rate is zero. Okay. Now, it is tempting that even if you use 20% or 30% or 40%, uh, probably it still makes sense because there's a lot of money coming in. But no, technically, a correct answer is you cannot because interest rate can be rigorously high. Maybe 40%, maybe 50%, who knows? So, uh, uh, but anyway, let's say interest rate is 12%, and uh, we are going to calculate present value using the calculator 12%. So, first, let's, let's uh, do this one. I, 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 this example, um, I just mentioned uh, 9. Uh, let's calculate the correct, pr cor correct present value and then correct net present value. So first problem that you're going to solve using calculator is what is the present value of a payment of 12 that is due at time 3? Now, you need to take out your calculators. We'll do it. Uh, I'll explain. 
explain and make sure you use a classical brain calculator if you are not. Uh, now just look at the calculators and particularly colors. Colors of the keys. Obviously there is a yellow key uh, for the second function. But apart from that, do you see anything else as analysts analyze the color of the key? If you do, you will find that there is a very interesting similarity between uh, uh, keys of third row and uh, keys of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Now, you, uh, uh, both are of same color. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is light gray, and same is the case with the third row. The, there is a reason for that. Now, think of why would 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 be of different colors? Because they are going to be used extensively. You are going to use this almost in every calculation. And same is the reason for the third row. You are going to use third row very extensively. So that's why they are less colored uh, so that it is prominent. You can easily spot This third row is, uh, in fact, known as a uh, set of uh, functions or keys for this is value, like EVM, time value of mine. Now, as you can see, there is N, which stands for number of years, there is a PV, this is prison value, uh, there is FV for future value, there is I for interest rate, and there is one uh, strange key by the name of PMT, which stands for uh, payment. Actually, it is, if there is a series of cash flow, as we have in that S75, we'll be using that PMT, but not now. Right now, we're going to ask calculator uh, based on the data that we want on the prison value of 12, that is giving 3 years. The way that I provide to the calculator is, but before that. Now the problem is, the calculator has a feature which can be good and bad. And in fact, it is so funny. The feature is, the calculator remembers the data. So once you give data, you get the prison value calculation. You move on, but calculator remembers. So the problem is, when you are doing calculation next time, if you do not erase the data that is already there, the calculator will not understand. Say, so calculator may use some of the old input and some of the new input and may give you the answer which is wrong. <coughs> and that has been tested in C of exam. You have a question, you have another question, and you have another question. You do first question, you do the other question. So first question is about PV, second question is about something else, the third question is again about prison value. So if you fail to erase old data, the answer that you will get is one of the choices. And you are happy, oh, my answer is this, this is B. But actually what they've done is, they've done the calculation themselves that if someone makes a mistake of not clearing old data, but it's a likely answer, and that is it. So make sure that you do have the habit of clearing the data. We'll talk about that now, obviously, uh, uh, this is the first time that we do the calculation. So let's do, uh, first step is, we need to provide input. Now, input in this is a, in a, um, different than regular input. So for example, to provide better calculator that number of years is three, we are not going to say n is 3, no, 3 is n. So first type 3, and then press n. So 3 is n. Okay. 12 is fp. 1, 2, right. Press 12, and then <coughs> fp. 12 is future value. Now for interest rate, we do not have to use point 0.12. No, no, we do not have to. Calculator already understands. So you type 1, 2, 12. 1, 2, just 1, 2, 12. Just type 12 and press i slash y. The i slash y key within the time value function. That is interest rate per year. Now that's a very interesting point. You cannot type 0 0.12 as you do in some other calculators. So you just type 12, that is your interest rate. <coughs> so you have provided three inputs to the calculator. We have mentioned that 3 is n. We have mentioned that 12 is the future value and interestingly 12 is the interest rate. They are saying just the by coincidence. Okay, now we want the calculator to do the job. So there is a key on the left top by the letter CPT, stands for compute CPT. You press CPT and then press prism value. Compute prism value. PV. So what do you get? 8.5. 8 8.54. 8 Very good. So let's use that. 8.54. 8.54 and that would give you the exact uh, one, minus 1.46 as NP. Next prison value. Okay, good. So you've done our first prison value calculation. Now I'm uh, for the moment skipping this calculation 
of the second problem where we had two payments, two unequal payments. We'll do that later. Let's move straight forward to this problem of annuity. Now we want the prison value of three payments of 75. First step is we have to clear up the data that we provided earlier. For that, there is a specific combination of keys. Just turning it off won't work. You turn it off, turn it on ten times, the data won't be deleted. You press C slash C E, the key that is only used to clear, it won't clear, be clear. There is a specific uh, set. And what is that? Now, for that, uh, second function FB. You press second function and press FB. As you can see, uh, right above the key of FB, uh, right above every key, there is a second function written. The second function of FB is written as CLR TVM. CLR stands for clear. Clear the TVM. So, do break this combination, will clear whatever data is here. This should be your default. Before any calculation of TVM, first do the clear TVM by second function FB. Now you have cleared the data. Okay, we are still the input. Again, 3 is N, because still we have 3 years. 3 is N. Uh, 75 is payment, PMT. 75 is payment. 12 is R. 12 is R. And final step is compute prison value. CPT, prison value. What do you get? 181.4. Which effectively means that by doing this project, we can make 81.4, a positive NPV of 81.4. As you can see, instead of using future value key, we have not even touched future value key. Because when you use future value, that tells the calculator that there is one payment at the end of three years. But when you say 75 is the payment, then you can understand that there are actually three payments of 75, 75 at end of each year. Take a note, at end of each year. You did not specify whether the payments were at the beginning of each year or at the end of each year. Calculator knows by default payments are at the end of every year. But what if they are not? What if I change this problem and I say that instead of 75 coming in at end of every year, 75 will three pay, will three payments of 75 at beginning of each year. Now for that there are various tricks available. Keep it in mind we have to uh, build a system which is not confusing in exam. You will have all, all your 90 seconds in exam to answer the, the question, 1.5 minute for each question, that's it. That's not, in which you have to read, answer, color, and be confident. Now, for that, there are certain tricks that we can use. If payments are at the beginning of the year, all you have to do is do the exactly the same calculation. Once you get 181.4, Multiply it by 1 plus R, which in this case will be 1.12. That's it. So 181.4 multiplied by 1.12 will give you the prison value as if payments were at the beginning. So what is the answer? 202.88. 202.88. That's it. Now I'm not saying this is the only way. There are various ways to do this. solve the problem. This is the most, uh, uh, what I should say, uh, less confusing. There is another method that is a bit confusing, which we also need to learn because in some cases that is the only method that we, we can use. Your calculator can be switched to another mode in which, which is known as beginning mode. And then your calculator will be doing all calculations knowing that payments are at the beginning of the year. So that is an alternate method to get to the same answer, 202.88. For that what you do, you, you uh, uh, switch to the beginning mode and, and you can uh, get the answer. I'm not explaining that right now. We'll talk about that later. 
Anyway, uh, certain terminologies, this, this, if payment is at the end, if payment is at the end, this is most common, most likely scenario, and that's why it's called ordinary scenario. Ordinary scenario. This is the most common. So this, this type of annuity is known as ordinary annuity. Ordinary annuity. But if payments are at the beginning, uh, that's called uh, annuity due. So that would be annuity due. So if payments are at the beginning, that would be called annuity due. If payments are at the end, that would be called ordinary annuity. Okay. Uh, so here you have uh, uh, the discussion of right at the end annuity of two types ordinary annuity and annuity due on the same page at the end annuity can be ten of two types uh, annuity due if first cash flow occurs immediately what does that mean at the beginning of year one immediately is beginning of year one or if cash flow occurs at the end uh, so first cash flow occurs one period from now that is end of year one so ordinary annuity if payments are at the end of the years sometimes you have payments forever that's called perpetuity in that case prison value is very uh, easily calculated so for example if there are series of payments of 20, 75 every year forever forever. Or all you have to do is divide the 75 by i and you will get the prison value. So if I ask you this question that there is a payment of 75 every year forever and I want you to get the prison value of that, all you have to do is write 75 divide by 0.12 and that's the answer. 75 divided by i is the prison value. This is known as perpetual. Uh, <clears throat> but very interesting question is how I know it is 12 percent why I am using 12 percent why not 14 percent why not 8 percent why not 6 percent now the theory is that the rate used by banks because keep in mind we will go to bank and say look we are going to collect this payment in 3 years what is the prison value how much will we going to pay now Bank is going to use a rate to calculate the value based on this formula. Required interest rate on any security, well, let's explain in detail later on what is that security, a loan, security, or a loan you can simply think of, is function of these three things. In fact, yeah, four things. The risk free rate. The rate that you can, the bank can get by giving money to government, which is risk free, because government can always return the money. How? Huh? Printing. Printing. They can, they can just print. They have the right. They are the only one legally allowed to print. So they can just print and give money back. So that's risk free. Now let's say government is offering nine percent. Government says, "Give us money. We are going to pay you nine percent." So if bank is not giving money to government or to someone else, then we'll look at least 9%, rather plus something. Plus for what? Default risk premium. Now what is default risk premium? Uh, for simplicity, first of all, make sure that you understand risk premium is another term for a percentage. 1% or 2% or 3% is equal risk premium. Basically, the percentage that should be added to 9 because of default risk. Default risk is that the other parties may fail to bring money at the time due time. So let's say bank adds around 2% uh, which is called default risk premium which can be 3%, 4%. 4%. We will learn that in detail later on. So bank uh, starts with 9% and then adds 2%. Then there is a problem of liquidity. Now which one is more liquid, uh, Honda or Corolla? Yeah. Now obviously we are not talking about the physical characteristic of solid or liquid, we are talking about how easy it is to buy or sell second hand uh, car. Same is the case with these loans, financial loans uh, and instruments. Uh, depending on how easy they are or how difficult they are, banks may uh, uh, add certain uh, risk premium, certain percentage. So let's say 
uh, bank says, I'm going to add 0.5% because it is not that liquid. And then maturity refers to length, duration, in, in terms of time, three years, five years, seven years. Generally, longer is the time, uh, there is additional percentage added for, for the time. So let's say bank adds 0.5% for the maturity risk premium because three years is longer period. So here you have, you add all these four, 9 plus 2 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 and you get the 12 percent. 12 percent. This is how we calculate the required rate of return. This nominal risk rate is further uh, divided into two components. This 9 percent can be a function of let's say uh, 1 percent plus 8 percent which gives us the 9. Um, there is a concept of real rate, <coughs> real risk free rate, and then inflation is added to that to get to the nominal risk free rate. What is the difference between real and nominal? You see, if I give 100 to a bank and I get 109 rupees at the end of the year, I'm richer by 9 rupees. But can I buy more products? Can I get more uh, food? Can I buy more things? Probably no. Not definitely by 9% more. So previously, let's say, I could purchase 10 kg of apple. Probably I can now buy 10 kgs of apple. That's it. Why? Because apples have become more expensive. So in nominal terms, in rupees terms, I have more money. But in terms of my ability to purchase, probably I'm, I'm richer by just 1%. That real uh, risk rate is, that is real risk rate is the real change in the purchasing power. That is 1%. Maybe one percent can be negative because if prices rise more than the the, the bank pays, then in reality, in real in real terms, you are lost. So we'll go into detail of this in level two and level three in detail. This real risk rate reflects preferences of individuals for current versus future real consumption. Current consumption versus future consumption. Now, I am entering the age where I am more likely to prefer, unlike you, there is a difference. At your age versus at my age, our preferences are different. I am 36. I am more closer to 50 than I am to 20. So think of this. What is the difference? Well, a person of 36 years of age versus a person of 24, 5, 6. Which one is likely to prefer current consumption over future consumption? Now, generally, young people prefer current consumption. Why? Because they want to consume to improve their life. They want to consume books. They need money for that. They want to consume money for improving their life situation. But by the time you reach 35, 40, 45, now is the time to save. For retire, you start saving money at that time. So these are very important. Now think of our country as, a, as, as one person. What is the age of our country? Would it be someone like, if on average, someone who is 55, 45, 35? On average, if you have to think of Pakistan population as one person, what would be, how, how old he or she would be? Based on the average age of all people in Pakistan. Very young. In fact, 50% of population, Pakistan population is below 40 years of age. We are very young. So as a country, we are likely to prefer current consumption. Because as an average, we are a young country. Unlike Germany or, or Japan, which on average are old people or they are old people. So they prefer more savings. But anyway, so very interesting topic. We'll talk about it in economics. Uh, now, one topic that we need to understand is loan amortization. This is a process. The amortization word is a very important term and you will be coming across it again and again. So we better be comfortable with this. Uh, if you take a loan and you repay, now there are various ways to repay loan. But amortization is a way where, for example, if I take a loan of 1000 and I pay uh, 300, 300 every year for four years. 
D1, D2, D3, D4. And the loan is paid off. This is a very interesting problem. The problem is, where is the interest? You know, when you take a loan, the loan is called principal. And whatever you pay on top of that is the interest. And generally, there is a, when you return the money, you know specifically, this is the interest, this is the principal. That's not the case here. All is happening is, I have to provide for 300 every year, and do it for 4 years, and my loan is paid off. So somehow, these fixed payments cover principal and interest. This is known as amortization. And fixed payments are also known as level payments. In America, the term is level. Level means fixed. It's the same amount every year. So this is a double amortizing loan. There are certain features that you can look at. As you can see, uh, principal and interest is part of one payment. Payment is same year after year. And when all payments have been made, loan is discharged. Loan is paid off. Unlike this, uh, there can be another loan where, for example, uh, I borrow 1,000 and then I pay 100, 100, 100, 100, and 1,000 back. The, the last year payment is 1100. As you can see in this, it is more easy to identify that what is going on. As you can see, that there is interest being paid only. In year one, you have an interest, year two interest, year three interest, year four interest, and then the original principal is being paid. So this is an example of non amortizing. While the first one is an example of amortizing. Very favorite with the examiners. This concept of amortizing versus non amortizing. So, process of paying off a loan with a series of periodic loan payments, series of periodic loan payments, whereby a portion of the outstanding loan amount is paid off or amortized with each payment. Each payment is settling a portion of the principal. Later on, we will divide these payments into interest and principal. Each payment will be divided into portion that is interest and that is principal. So interest and principal TR and principal portion of each payment will be separated. We'll do that later on. In fact our calculator can do that for us. There is a very interesting principle which is one of the most simple things. But because there is a terminology for that, uh, do not let the terminology uh, uh, make it complex. Let me explain through through uh, calculation. Now let's say we have various projects A, B, and C, for which we want to calculate present value. At T uh, zero, we want to calculate present value. So we have payments at T one, T two, and we have payments at at. at so let's say uh, we have payment of 40, 40, and 50 here for project A. For project B, we have 0, 400, and 50. And for project C, we have uh, 200, uh, 200, and 230. And we want to know prison value. In fact, we are more interested in knowing the total prison value. This is what we want to know, really. Uh, it is okay to not know this. Now, there are two ways to get to this. The one simple method is, you can calculate prison value of A, you can calculate prison value of B, prison value of C, and then the sum of that. Now, an alternate is, instead of calculating prison value of each project, if you do not need that, what you can do is, you can add these cash flows occurring at one time, 240, and calculate prison value of that. You can add these cash flows occurring at one time, 640, and calculate prison value of that. You can add these cash flows, and uh, so you have 330 and discount. And you will get the same answer. So instead of discounting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 payments, all you have to do is discount these three payments and that's it, you'll get the answer. This is known as cash flow additivity principle. You can add cash flows 
and then discount. So present value of any stream of cash flow equals the sum of the present value of each cash flow as long as cash flows are indexed at the same point in time. So all it is saying is instead of calculating present value of each project, just add cash flows at each year and then discount. So this, this will be discounted for one year, this will be discounted for two years and this will be discounted for three years. How do you do that? Now, one way to do that is you calculate, you use uh, uh, the, the keys and you use 240 as future value and you get present value, then you use 640 as future value and get present value. You have to do it three times and then there is a quicker way to do that. But let's first do the lengthy way and then we will do it the quicker way. However, uh, you can get help from memory of the calculator because once you calculate present value of 240, you can store it in a memory. Then you calculate present value of 640, you can add it to the memory, and then you calculate present value of 330, you can add it to the memory. So the memory, calculated memory can be used for that purpose. Let's do that. First step. Uh, uh, first step, clear the uh, primary memory. Second function FP. Second function FP, clear. Now calculate present value of 240. Uh, 240 is the future value. 240 is the future value. 1 is n. Yes, in year 1. So 1 is n. 12 is i. Compute present value. Compute present value. These numbers will be given in any order. Future value first, then i second. Yeah, your calculator input can be in any order. So you get the present value of only 240, right? Now you can either note it down somewhere. What is the answer? 214.29. 214.29. Now you can note it down somewhere or you can use the memory of the calculator. Now your calculator has not one memory. It has 10 different memories. And you can use all of them. The way to do that is, once your calculator is displaying the number, you have to press store one, STO, there is a key STO on the left side, you will find the key of STO and then press digit one. So press STO and digit one. Now you press, uh, uh, so you just clear, clear the, 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 just press C, so your screen is clear, just C, just C or C, there is a key on the, by the bottom to clear, C, C, so your calculator on this page zero, nothing. Now you want to recall what you have stored in the memory. There is a key RCL. Next to the store, there is a key RCL. RCL stands for recall. Press recall one. You get your number. It's still there, not gone. Basically, uh, number one is the memory position that you are using. You stored it position number one, and now you are recalling from position number one. Okay? Now let's move to the second step. Now in the second step, you are going to use uh, again. Uh, 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 2 is n, 640 is future value, 12 is i, compute present value. Once you get the present value, we're going to move forward. So let's do that. Calculate present value of 640. 2 is n, 2 is n, 640 is future value, 12 is i, and compute present value. 510 point very good. You have got 5, 10, point two zero. Now you may note it down on the register wherever, or you can store it at position number 2 if you want. So store 2. There you go. And now you have stored it at position number 2, so you can just uh, clear the screen by pressing CE and then see. Recall 2, RCL 2. RCL 2 will give you the same answer, number. So recall 1. Or recall two, you have stored present value. Let's do the same thing for the third number and store it at position number three. So now 330 is the future value. 330 is the future value. 12 is i. Two three four point eight nine. You can store it at position number three.
and then you can add all three to get the answer. Now, I did not discuss, but in fact, it was quite possible. Okay. Have you understood at three? Just stored at three? Okay. I did not mention, but it was quite possible that instead of storing at three different locations, you could have added second and third number to the memory number one. And you would just get the answer. How do you do that? Well, let's do that now. Uh, uh, type the, the, the second number, what was it? 5, 10? So you type 5, 10, yeah, or just continue press record 2. Record 2 will give you the number. Now, actually, what you want to do is you want to add it to what is already stored at position number 1. So, number is in front of you in the calculator. You are going to press, listen carefully, you are going to press store, then digit plus, and then 1. Store plus one. What does this mean? You want the calculator to add it to whatever is already stored at position number one. So you just press store plus one. Now if you recall one, you will see that the number has gone up. And you do the same thing with the third number. So you recall three, there's the third number. Now press store plus one. You wanted to add it back to the, to the, now you recall one, you read the answer. So what is the answer? If you add all three, what is the answer? 959.38. 959.38. Others can check if you need help. Now, whatever, whoever is the, if is the first answer, I just write it on the board. That does not mean it's correct. If you are not getting the answer, we can, we can discuss if it is correct. Generally, when I ask question, whatever answer I get, I write it on the board. That does not mean it is correct. <coughs> that simply means that someone has done it, and hopefully that is correct. But if you do your calculation, you are not getting that number, let me know. It is quite often that uh, uh, we, we have to change the number. Right? Everyone is getting 959.38? Okay, great. Now, we did it in a very lengthy way. There is a short tip. As you can see, these three payments, 240, 640, 330, are not equal. They are unequal payments. So we cannot use the annuity function, but we can use some other function, which is known as cash flow sheet. As I mentioned, everything is being recorded. Tomorrow morning, you'll be able to access the video lecture. So if, any, if you miss out anything or any calculation, do not worry at all. You can just replay the video and redo uh, the calculation. Okay, now we are going to do it the easy way. Here, let me introduce to you another worksheet, which is known as cash flow worksheet. Uh, for this, you need to look at the calculator, and there is a key by CF. Just CF. It says CF. You press that. Your calculator must be saying, yeah, just press CF. Nothing. Do not type anything. Just press CF. So your calculator must be saying CF 0 and then you have 0. Basically it is saying cash flow at time 0 is 0. Now we do not have any cash flow at time 0. So fine. There are there is, there is a key arrow down arrow. Press that. Arrow, there is up arrow and down arrow. Press the down arrow. Now it says C01. Cash flow at time 0 1. Very good. What is cash flow at time 0 1? 240. So you type 240 and press enter, enter there is a key by the name of enter, top right or somewhere top, top, top left, uh, enter. Okay, now you have done two things, by pressing CF you have activated cash flow worksheet and by doing this you have given the input. Now you press down and you get something F01, just ignore it, press down again, press down again, you get C02, very good. Cash flow at time 2, you <coughs> type 640 and you press enter. You press down, down, you reach C03. 330, 330 is cash flow at time 3. Okay, very good. You have given all the inputs. Now you press the key which is NPV. 
just press NTV, that was a while. And it asks for interest rate. It says, what is the interest rate? Very good. Type 12 and press enter. Press enter. And now press down, the key down key. <coughs> what it says? And you press compute, CPT. Did you get the same answer? Yes, yes, sir. Very good. Now, by the way, we have uh, presented you a document, how to use this calculator. All of this has been discussed in that document as well, in, in addition to the video lecture that is available. In case you do not have that document, make sure that you collect it from Puppet. So we have learned about calculator, uh, and we have learned about these things. Uh, let's move to the second page. I'm moving. You can access uh, these uh, PDF version of, uh, of uh, these smart summaries, as well as those colored notes. So if you want to have a soft copy to read in your office or on your laptop or iPad, whatever, you, you can do that. Um, interest rate has three names. In exam, be careful. You may be provided with any of these three names. It may say the required return is 12% or it may say the discount rate is 12%. Or it may say the opportunity cost of capital of capital of capital is twelve percent. So there are three different ways to interpret it. Now the problem is in US mostly uh, investments generally in US. Now think of this. This is a very interesting concept. Let's take a break and then I'll continue from, from here. There's a very interesting problem. Um, now, if you have money, though I don't understand you do not have money because you're young. Uh, whenever you have money, you can use it for some interesting purpose other than giving it to bank. But once you have extra money that uh, you do not know what to do with and you want to save it, you give it to bank. What is bank going to do with it? But what do they do? They collect money from people and then they give it to some institution like Unilever, who needs that money to, to have a factory to make products and sell. Now Unilever may think, why use the middleman? Why use the bank as the middleman? Why not get money directly from people? Because people can trust Unilever. And exactly that is what Angro did. Probably you know that Angro got money from people, from public, by issuing repair certificates. Idea was that why do we give you to bank and bank pay you four or five percent and then bank give us money and grow and we pay to the bank fifteen percent. So why not let's cut the middleman? You give us money directly and we will give you fourteen percent. So now this is not that common in Pakistan, uh, but in U.S. and Europe, in developed countries, corporations do, uh, prefer to get money directly from people to save the interest cost. You cut out the middleman, the bank, and you save money. So it's very common. And in fact, common people uh, have a choice that they either can give money to the bank or they can invest with the, any of these corporations like General Motors, like Ford. Uh, there's so many corporations, Boeing, they get money from public. Uh, when they get money from public, there are various ways they can do that. But the most common is... They'll announce, okay, we want you to give us money. So let's say I'm representing the corporation and you are the people. So I'm, top, I'm saying, okay, we want to borrow for five years. Anyone who is willing to give us money is welcome. For every, you need to invest at least $1,000. And if you invest $1,000, we will pay you $30 uh, every six months. Uh, and uh, uh, after five years, we will return you your money. And at now, when you will give us your money, uh, we will give you a bond, a commitment, uh, a page, which will be called a bond, in which we will say we will return you money. Uh, if we fail to return money, we will pay these penalty things like this. So that certificate of pay, in Pakistan we call it certificate, in US we call it a bond, will be yours. So if you pay me $2,000, I'll give you two bonds. So for $10,000, you get 10. It's up to you how many bonds you want to purchase. Now someone may purchase one bond, some may purchase 10 bonds. The key part is $30 every six months. Okay, so I, I can write it this way that uh, you can invest $1,000 at time zero 
Now, one thousand is the standard. You need to know that. If not mentioned otherwise, each bond is uh, of one thousand dollars. And then, t the half year, t one year, t uh, one point five years, t two years. So this way, we have introduced a, a six month time. So there will be a payment of thirty, thirty every six months. Now this. 30 payment, dollar 30 payment is also known as coupon payment or coupon, various pronunciation, coupon payment. But if I ask you, what is the rate of return that you are getting on? Now, rate of return is for the full year. Now, you are earn, going to earn $30 plus $30, $60. So you may say, because I'm earning $60 over the investment of $1,000, so my rate of return is 6%. But this is wrong. Why? Because this $30, you got it at mid of the year, you could have reinvested this and maybe could have converted into, let's say, 31.5. So if you do that, then at the end of the year, you will not have 60. Rather, you will have 61.5. And which makes your rate of return 6.15% and not 6%. Now this 6.15% uh, is known as uh, effective annual rate because it considers uh, the opportunity to reinvest money during the year. Now this is unfortunately over. Well, this is not possible in Europe. European corporations do not pay coupon six monthly. Rather, most of European corporations pay coupon at the end of the year, or there is a six dollar at the end. Which means you cannot reinvest. You cannot earn money on the coupon. So it's a very interesting feature, which is common in America, uh, that because you get money every six months, so in even one year, you have the opportunity to reinvest this money for six months and you can earn some additional interest on that. So I just use a number one that by investing this $30, you can convert into $31.5. So by the end of the year, you will have a total of $61.5 and not 60. So um, now as far as this bond is concerned, on the bond, it, they will say our annual coupon rate is 6%. The bond will say our annual coupon rate is 6% visually paid in two uh, pieces of 30-30. So an exam, you may be given this story uh, and you may have to calculate this 6.15%. Now, this is not correct, in fact, uh, because if you invest this 30 for six months, how much you will have? You will not have 31.5. Question is, you will invest at what rate? Now we assume, let's say you invest at the same rate. You are able to invest in a bond that pays 6%. So then what will happen? This $30 will grow to what? In six months, it will grow to 30 point. If you invest $30 for six months at 6%, it will grow to what? Basically, what you need to do is 30 multiplied by 1.03. 31.80. Point 31.80. 31.80. Basically, this is compounding. The, this is the future value. To calculate future value, you multiply the present value with 1 plus r. Uh, present value into 1 plus i, not plus. Present value into 1 plus r. I in this case is 6%, but because the time period is only half a year, so instead of using 6%, you will use 3%, 0.03. So present value into 1.03, and you get this. So we can write that instead of having 61.5 at the end, we will have 61.80, which is 30 plus 31.80, divided by 1000, and our effective annual rate is 6.18%. 
So in exam, you may be required to convert 6% to 6.18%, but you may not have to do all this complex thing. All you have to do is use this formula, and you'll get the answer. So 1 plus periodic rate raised to power m minus 1 will give you, let's see that. In this case, 1 plus 3%. How I get 3%? Because for 6 months, your rate of return is 3%. Raised to power 2 because m is the number of compounding periods in a year because one year has two six months periods so two minus one this you give you should give you directly 6.18 percent now this eAR is also known as eAY effective annual rate We can use calculator. Instead of this formula, you can also use the calculator to get effective annual rate. Because you, uh, okay, so let's do that. In your calculator, uh, if you look at digit 2, just digit 2, just look at it, not question it. Look at digit 2. The second function of the digit 2 is ICON, right? This ICON stands for interest conversion, converting one interest rate to the other, ICON, interest conversion. So this is the third worksheet. So let's use this worksheet to convert uh, one rate into the other. The so second function 2, press second function 2, then you do that, the so second function and digit 2. Your calculator should be saying something like annual. Now, NOM is the word for nominal, or the, in our case, nominal rate is uh, without compounding, which is 6%. So you type 6 and you press enter. Nominal rate without compounding is 6, 6 and enter. Okay? Now you press down. It says C slash Y. What did it say? EFF. EFF. Okay, now uh, in this case, okay. So EFF is another, another term for EAY. But it says zero, right? All you have to do is press compute CPT. What do you get? 6.18? 6. Again, 6? Let's press down again. Let's see what else is there. Press down again. No. So you keep press down. You have only three inputs. NOM is the one that we have given 6%. Now keep pressing down and go to C slash Y, what it says? One. One. Now that is what we need to change. Basically, this is how many compounding periods per year. In our case, there are two compounding periods because there are two six months slots in a year. So you type two and you press enter. Now you go to EFF by pressing down, you go to EFF and press compute. Six point zero nine? Why are we getting 6.18? So let's go back to NOM. So NOM, you type 6, NOM, NOM 6 and enter. Now press down to EFF and press compute again. So you still get 6.09. Or 6.18? 6.09. So what's wrong? Did we make a mistake on the calculation? Or the calculator is... We made a mistake, sir. We put 6 divided by 2 in here. Yeh 31.8 me? Yes, sir. Yeh 31.8 nahi hooga? 30.90. 30 point, very good. 30.90. 30.90. And that would make the total, instead of 61.8, it will be 30 point, uh, sorry, 60 point 90, 60.90. And that would make this rate as 6.09%. And this formula is maybe the 6.09 and 1.03 square minus 1. Do you get 6.18 or 6.09? 6.09. 6.09. Ab yada gaya hai. 
it, as I mentioned, I am writing anything on the board. I am just writing what is being mentioned. It can be incorrect. So the correct is 6.09, which is also the number that we get by using the uh, worksheet from the calculator. So yeah, uh, you can either use the formula or you can use the worksheet to get the answer. 6.09% is the effective annual rate, 6.09. PAR, PAY, or EFF. There are various for the same thing. Okay, that is end of our first reading.